Namathu Ratana Tayasa. May I pay homage to Triple Zem, the Buddha, Dhamma, and the Sangha. My respect goes to my parents and my teachers. Hello, good evening everyone. Today is uh, um, Wednesday and the 21st of April 2021. This is Achan Sujan from Warapunya Meditation Center, Aberdeen, Scotland. Hi Margaret. Good evening and hi everyone. So today, uh, after one week, more than a week now actually, so one week, seven, eight, nine days, I'm here with you all tonight. It feels quite uh, awkward <laughs> and feels very different after being away for uh, nine days and coming back and uh, talking to you all online. Good evening, David. Yeah. So the whole one week, we've been going through different uh, activities and uh, also different uh, works. And as I have said, that it was a New Year, an Asian New Year, and it's uh, really well uh, practiced and. Um, Meanwhile, because of the corona uh, virus spreading so fast in uh, uh, Asian countries, uh, this due to the the celebrations, quite worrying too. And I hope that uh, this uh, this week, the Scottish government has released uh, some of the restrictions, and hope uh, that it will not go back. Uh, like they are facing at the moment in Thailand or India or Nepal. So I would uh, encourage you all to be mindful. Uh, although I've been uh, trying my best to use masks and uh, trying, not encouraging people to come to the center many, uh, too many, is trying to really you know uh, have at least of just a uh, six people in a shrine room and uh, four people in a living room and which okay is sometimes quite difficult um, and also just want to uh, announce here as well that uh, um, since the lockdown eased Anybody would like to uh, join for the evening chantings and a guided meditation, particularly on a Tuesday nights, you are welcome to uh, join. And if you would like to join, uh, just to let me know, uh, let the center know that you are coming, so that we can control the numbers, and not more than six people uh, at any one time. Uh, and this is again just uh, uh, helping our members, those who are willing to uh, join the uh, communal chanting and uh, guided meditation. And as we all know that um, uh, communal practice is so important in the practice uh, for the development and uh, cultivation of uh, mindfulness. Um, Otherwise, it can lead us to such a, a difficult uh, understanding and uh, a difficult position too. As we are human beings, so we do need uh, a communal activities which keeps us feeling that we are also uh, playing a part in the community. So that's why it's uh, uh, quite important that whenever you have an opportunity you can join physically and again this is i'm saying physically is so important uh, to join 
And the practice, again, as I normally say, is that it's important that the more you do, the better you will become. Um, and the continuation of your practice basically leads to the development and also gaining the knowledge and vision on that. And obviously, in the practice, there will be so many obstacles and so many distractions that always takes our attention away from uh, the desired uh, practice of a meditation and which is very common and uh, if we haven't seen the benefit of a meditation and if we haven't control over our desires and we are not mindful enough to deal with these mental states then it's very easy to say oh i am tired i just came back from work i haven't uh, cleaned my uh, clean uh, or washed or have a shower yet i need something to eat or i want to watch a television or i want to watch this movie first so much yeah so much excuses will simply creep in and with that, it's very easy to saying that, okay, I will do it tomorrow. And as we have a famous saying, that tomorrow never comes. <laughs> it's always tomorrow, eh? never comes. And gradually what happens is that uh, this uh, intention to practice will just go further, far away, uh, day after another. I remember... Um, when I attended the 10 days of silent meditation for the first time before I became a novice monk in Nepal, the experience was fantastic and experience was so great and it was like uh, um, awakening. Huh? It was like enlightening in yourself uh, while you are in you were in the on the retreat. And the experiences that you experience is tremendously beyond the words to explain. And as a result of that, at the day when you leave the center, the retreat center, you have a thought of, okay, I'm going to make a resolution that I will be practicing meditation early morning one hour and evening one hour. If not, at least one hour a day. And I will not miss even a one day. So that will be the thought. And that was my thought when I left the retreat center. And I was still in that mood, in that zone of such a calmness and tranquility mindset. And I realized that uh, I, I was able to continue practicing probably a week or two. And gradually, this laziness creeps in, these responsibilities creeped in, and then the, the homeworks, the works, helping parents. And gradually, there was a thought uh, that, oh, I will do it just once a day. And then after once a day, I've been doing for some time, oh, it's too long, one hour is too long, I will do a half an hour practice. And then goes on, this rather than increasing a number or increasing the uh, amount of uh, practices, I was basically decreasing it. And this decreasing of uh, practice basically uh, uh, eventually helped or eventually caused me to stop meditating. And having stopped meditating doesn't mean that back of my mind was always thinking, oh, I haven't done meditation today. Oh, I haven't done meditation today. It's okay, I will do it tomorrow. So it goes on like that. The thought after thought, days after days, by the time when I realize it's already gone one year. Yeah? So these things would happen, and which is very common, which is very easy. And which is again similar way, even the Buddha, when he was practicing uh, for the attainment of the Buddhahood, he had a similar thoughts, the so-called the Mara, the obstructions. 
He explained later one of the discourses that he was giving to the venerable monks, saying that before the um, enlightenment, he did have uh, the thought of uh, um, sensual pleasures. And then later on, when he was practicing uh, the austerity uh, in the jungle, the five other friends came and uh, gave him uh, attendance. Some were preparing some fruits and water, uh, and some were just practicing along with uh, side him, or alongside with him, and so on. And. It happened that uh, he, uh, you know, he he became very weak and he was almost died. According to the Buddha's his own word, he says that he could touch the um, uh, the backbone from the belly. That much thin he became, and he was able to touch that. And he was almost dying at that time, and then. It happened that uh, uh, he ate some food which was given by the villagers. Having seen that uh, the Buddha, now the Buddha to be, uh, gave up a practice of uh, a fasting and uh, the austerity practice, and they left him, abandoned him. And despite of that abandonment, Buddha didn't give up his dedication and determination to the practice. And that's why there are two, uh, and I was saying that uh, there are uh, one, the people who can live alone because they have given up all. All the feathers, anything that uh, holds them back, they have given up. And they are able to stay alone and practice alone. And there are another people, those who have given up their house house life and given up the senses, the entertainment of a senses, they also can live alone. And this is uh, this example uh, about the Buddha. He had a luxurious life and a so-called princely life. And he had given up that and become a homeless, become an ascetic, and a wanderer. He himself called um, the uh, a person who is searching for the truth. So in that way, he become a real uh, a wanderer and able to stay alone without needing anyone's support anyone's um, around like we can look at ourselves uh, whenever you have no opportunity to talk to somebody or you can't go and roam around and you, you don't see anybody for a couple of days you will be mad you're feeling mad and why that is because we human beings are always uh, desiring for the communication or for the community. And this community, without the community, the humans are very different, different and very difficult to stay alone. And that's simply because the moment when you stay alone, this mind plays so many tricks. They say uh, that there's only one kind of a beings on earth who thinks and thinks too much and that thinking too much makes them unhealthy. Whereas all other beings like all animals or uh, any other uh, invisible beings, they do not think that much compared to the human beings. And we ourselves make it complicated, things complicated. And that's simpler because we can't live alone. And we always want to engage a something, someone, some ways, with uh, in some reasons. 
And as a result of that, it's always difficult for us to stay alone. And people, so many people were just uh, telling me stories that how difficult that quarantine is. Uh, the two weeks quarantine. And that quarantine is not that hard, you know, that, uh, that is more harder than you are self-quarantined uh, quarantined in your own house. And it's all because we haven't trained ourselves and we haven't learned ourselves uh, to live alone and being alone. Hello, Somali. Good evening. Yeah. So with that, uh, we always need a company. That's why there are so many news going on that I can't see my grandchild, I can't see my friends, I can't go around. So that's why I'm having mental issues. So that's pretty understandable. That's simply because we think too much. When we have the privilege, we do not see uh, the appreciation of it and now when it's not there and now we mourn for it okay but whereas the buddha uh, the after the all the five friends who left who left him alone in the forest so let him practice alone he didn't give up and he didn't even think but he took that an opportunity uh, took that situation as an opportunity to practice so he dedicated himself fully and no need to worry. So he continued his practice. So he didn't give up his dedication. He didn't give up his determination to attain the liberation. And eventually he was able to attain the liberation. And even when we look at his past or previous lives, so many previous lives, countless previous lives although we can hear and uh, we can read only a couple of around a thousand stories about his previous lives but there are countless in that I also suggest uh, that ever since he took a vow um, or made a resolution that in the future he would like to be the buddha ever since he continued his plan or his resolution doesn't matter which realms or which form he was reborn in different realms he continued his resolution until he attained the liberation so i am telling this story simply to encourage all of us in a way that practice is not something that we do uh, and then uh, will just go away we need to continue practicing and this reinforces if we have a community that we work together, practice together. And that's, that's the reason why you, know, you may notice that I've been trying to have this uh, talks every day and trying to have almost every day apart from some breaks and the chanting and um, guided meditation simply to facilitate every one of us that you know we are all although physically we're not able to come together and practice together this online at least will help us all to practice together and just being a friend with you all some people take this opportunity to practice and they grow their knowledge, their understanding, and their practice, and their experiences. And others, at least, they have in their back of mind that, oh, there is Achan giving a talks, there is a guided meditation, and you know, whenever I, am, I have time, I will join and I will listen. At least there is something that looking forward. It's like an online community that we have developed. And this is basically to facilitate all of us to come together and continue practicing, and developing our senses, developing our mindfulness, and developing our understanding. So eventually we will be able to cultivate it more and more, and we will become mature in the practice. 
And here it won't be only in the practice, but also gradually the, all the information and the knowledge and uh, the Dhamma, you will absorb them as well. And I remember uh, two or three days ago, uh, uh, Margaret was saying uh, that he, she was enjoying painting, painting the fence in the garden. Uh, and every action that he she was doing, she was enjoying, and she was saying that she's you know uh, thanking for these teachings and the talks. And similar way, there was a, a lady who came to speak with me, saying uh, that uh, before she was very angry person, and uh, after hearing some of the talks, he be uh, she becomes. A much calmer and ability to notice. So that's why, although you are not following every night or following every day, uh, occasionally even joining this community helps you to enlightening something. And that is the beauty that even the Buddha said that we will have an opportunity to hear things we never heard before. And even if we have heard it before but unclear, our doubts will be cleared. And any misunderstanding that we may have about uh, that will be cleared too. And with that, we will be developing our confidence that the dhammas, the teachings, the, the methods, the principles and how we do it becomes much, much clearer. We will gain the confidence and believe in the practice and in the teachings and the methods. And with that, what happens that we will gain more knowledge, we will gain more understanding about our own life and our own community. So that's why it's really important that we join with the communities and working together for our own good and happiness. So that's why on this account, uh, our center is now open to you all, whoever would like to come for the uh, evening chanting or even the weekends, uh, just come. And also every week, uh, every month, we're going to have so-called Sila program, which means uh, um, uh, observing eight precepts and uh, listening to talks from different monks. Uh, and also attending some small ceremonies on Zoom, which you can join as well. But if you are physically willing to join at the center, I would encourage you to tell me or uh, inform uh, one of our monks or even to uh, one of our uh, staffs, members, so that we can uh, uh, make uh, place available and so you can come and join uh, these um, events and meditation sessions. So the Buddha was simply uh, in these ways he was able to uh, be alone and despite his friends left him uh, he was able to continue his practice and eventually he attained the Buddhahood. So it's a, the practice of a mindfulness meditation is although we are learning with the community, but eventually it is teaching us how to live alone and being island for oneself and taking a refuge on ourselves. And eventually we will be freeing ourselves, gain, gaining happiness that we have created by our own actions, our own efforts. And that will help us to grow and be happy in our life. So with this, may you all be well and happy. I end here for tonight and in a few moments time we're going to have evening chanting and guided meditation. You're most welcome to join with us. Until then, good night and see you shortly. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Satu.